So it's Peter Mingles. We're going to talk a little bit today about lead generation, a business conversation, or more or less a mature conversation about running your business and working with lead generation inside your business. First, of course, I'm in the lead generation business, so I would, you would imagine I would be somewhat biased to think that you absolutely positively have to have leads to be able to build your business. I think anybody that's been in network marketing or in direct sales for any period of time would realize that the more leads you have going through your business, the more and the better type of leads you have going through your business, the more and the better your business will probably grow. So, of course, I'm somewhat biased, but I'm going to share with you some of my biases on why you need leads building into your business. So we're going to talk about, again, we're going to call this a mature or a business conversation about lead generation. I'm going to share with you a couple of things, some of the good reasons why you work with leads, and then also when you buy leads, one of the reasons or some of the things you need to know as you're buying leads that you probably should know up front. And, again, having and calling this a mature or a business conversation about leads, if you're not willing to do the things that are necessary, to make leads work in your business, chances are you probably shouldn't buy them. And then you should probably also reevaluate why you're even looking at you know, building a business. And let's start talking about some of the good things that happen when you buy leads and one of the reasons why or several of the reasons why you want to take a look at leads in building your business. First, you know, you can't always control where the sales come from, but you certainly can control the activities of your people or yourself or your sales organization. Now repeat that for a second because the first time I heard that I disagree with that tremendously have, a, I guess, a skills level or an ego as such where I thought that, uh, what do you mean, I can't control where the sales come from. I can basically control who I can close and who I can't and things like that. Give me enough time with the right person and I'll be able to close just about anybody. Well, that's nice. You can pound your chest and all that sort of stuff and, and beat on the drum and tell everybody how great you are. But realistically speaking, that's not the way you're going to build a sales organization. When you're building a sales organization, you're never going to have that much control. Not everyone, even if you are that great, is not going to have the same skill level that you do. So what you're going to have to finally realize, especially in sales management or in building a downline, is that you'll never be able to control specifically where your next distributor is going to come from. But you certainly can control the activities that lead to more distributors coming into your business. And what I mean by that control specifically is you're never going to be able to open up a phone book or look at a bunch of leads or anything like this and say, Joe Smith specifically is going to come into our business because there may be some things outside that you cannot control about Joe Smith, and he may or may not be able to come into your business. But on the other hand, you can take a look at a buying a batch of leads and say, I'm going to get five distributors from this, and who knows which one of the distributors are going to be the ones that actually pop into your business, but you will be able to control that by working leads in your business. So that's a couple of things. Now, when I say things like that, I said you won't be able to control specifically who comes into building your business. It opens up the door for me having a conversation about leads and working leads and working your network marketing company being a little bit like a soft science as opposed to a hard science. A hard science would be Joe Smith right there on that line is going to come into our business. That would be a hard science, be able to pick him out specifically, do all the things necessary to make sure you get him specifically in your business. Relative to network marketing, it's more of a soft science. So some of the things we're mentioning here are talking about soft sciences. And again, that's what happens sometimes when you're working your leads. I want you to think about yourself, and then I also want you to think about your sales team. So there's there's a unique thing about human nature. Sometimes they only think about themselves, and that's unique not only to our industry, of course, but unique to people. But then also I want you to start to think about what happens in the minds of your people as well. So it's a little switch, if you will, a little inversion that you have to do. Think about you specifically, take things personally, but then also flip it out and kind of flip it over and then take a look at the world and what's happening with your people. Well, the things internally that happen when you start to work leads, I'm talking about internally for you is as you get a chance to tell your story, you get a chance to internalize your story. Specifically, if you were doing three or four or five presentations a day, then what would happen with your belief in the industry? And the more people you talk to about network marketing, you'll find it's really about belief and your conviction towards the industry. So that's going to happen to you as you're building your business. Now, I'm going to give you a 1,000 people in your business right now as a downline. Could you imagine if you had a 1,000 people and you could somehow control now you're taking the inversion, you're kind of flipping it out, or you're out of you, but now you're looking at building a sales team. Could you imagine if individually each one of your people were then thinking about and talking about their business a couple of more times per day, per week, per month, whatever it would be the applicable number? Could you think of what would happen to the belief in your business if you were doing that? So lead generation is important for you, but if you're contemplating having a downline or you have a downline already, chances are you're going to need leads help those people build and solidify their faith in the business because the more times they tell the story, the more they internalize it, the more their belief goes up in there, and then chances are other things are going to start to happen positively. 
Now, what I mean by this is, think about your business a little bit like a magnet. As you start to do the things that are positive in your business, it has a tendency of rewarding or reproducing those positive actions with other positive actions. It's consequence and result, or it's consequence and activities. It's like the law of cause and effect. You do one thing and then something else happens, well, one good thing is going to lead probably to another good thing happening. And that will lead to another good thing happening in your business. And that will lead to another good thing happening in your business. So when you're working with leads, and this is the soft science part, you can't tell you specifically what's going to happen, but you set the universe in motion for the law of attraction to happen more often for you. This is Peter Mingle signing off. See you next Thursday.